angels willing to hold us in their arms When our words of stone or ashes And we both passed on Let forever mean forever and carry on Hello there and welcome to my video on how to maintain a diesel parking heater. So I did actually run this last night. Uh, it's the only time it's ran this year. It did run most of, of last winter uh, when I uh, was getting ready to put it away for the, the winter. Uh, it, it didn't really want to start, especially on the first try. Uh, it would peter out. It wouldn't start on the first try. It would the second try. It, no problem. It would fire up. But it's an indicator that it's getting gunked up on the inside and needs to be cleaned out. And so that's what we're going to do. And uh, I'm going to take you along for the ride so you can see the process. There's not really a whole lot to it. And I am going to show you the most critical areas to where if you have an issue, it can cause starting problems. So uh, that's what we're going to go over. Hopefully I can teach you a little bit about these heaters. They are absolutely incredible. I decided to go ahead and run it last night for two reasons. For one, I wanted to get everything good and hot so that it might break, break loose a little easier today. We're talking about soot and carbon and stuff like that. So I wanted to get it warm, get it hot, and uh, hopefully it'll come loose a little easier. Uh, and the same with the bolts. Just by running it last night, uh, if those bolts... Uh, on the inside to hold it together were seized at, at all um, that hopefully would have broke them loose because the metal it, uh, you know expands and contracts with the heat and the cold and uh, there's stuff like rust or corrosion or something like that that's that's in the threads it will actually help break that loose and actually makes a tremendous difference in getting bolts out uh, ask anybody uh, what their favorite tool is in a mechanic shop and there are many people that will raise their hand and tell you the flame wrench. That's the torch. So the flame wrench is an interesting tool um, because you can use it to heat up things in hopes that it will break it loose. And you can also use it to turn those things that won't break loose into liquid. And you know what? When the bolt turns to liquid, it really doesn't matter anymore. It's not a bolt. But uh, anyway, I wanted to warm it up. It did give me the hardest time I've ever had with this heater starting it last night. Um, and all I did was I brought it inside. It's been in the shed all summer. Brought it inside, put fuel in it, plugged it in, and started it. That's, you know, and it took me, well, four try. It took me four times last night to get it to finally take off. Uh, but it ran flawless all throughout the night ran totally flawless so we're going to tear it down we're going to clean it all out i'm going to show you those specific problem areas and uh and then we'll go from there hopefully when i'm done i'll be able to do a test run and it fires up on the first try and no issues whatsoever and i have a sneaky suspicion it will but we'll find out all righty i know it's a little rough to see up in there and i'm going to try to be as uh, non-shaky as possible but uh, all of that's a chore, <laughs> considering what I'm doing. You're looking at the bottom side of the heater there. And the big uh, metal-looking pipe you see closest to you, that's the exhaust. Uh, you'll see a green tube. That is the uh, fuel line that is going in. And just on the other side of the fuel line, and you might not be able to see it real well, but there's another tube, but it's kind of like that cardboard kind of tube stuff. Uh, and there's another clamp. Right now, at this particular moment, the only thing that we need to worry about is the exhaust. And so I'm going to stick a Phillips screwdriver in there where there's a uh, clamp at. And I'm just going to loosen that clamp. I'm trying to give you as best as a shot as I can of it. There's not a lot of room for me to deal with there. And then I'm just going to wiggle on that exhaust. I may have to grab it from the other side here. And my hope was is that it would just pop loose, but it's not going to. So, okay, well, I have to open up the side of the case because that's where all my uh, goodies are uh, to help me. I've got some specialty tools and stuff like that in there that I'll show you. Uh, okay, folks, you're looking at the inside of the uh, computer tower that the actual heater sets on top of. 
And, uh, you know, a lot of channels won't do this, but uh, I'm not a lot of channels. I want to show you a, a, uh, a boneheaded mistake that I had made last night uh, that there's a possibility it could have been ugly, but um, I didn't think anything about it. And uh, I want to make sure that you do. So let me pan the camera down here. And you can see there has been some rodent, probably a squirrel, that decided to make this heater their home for a little while. And there's a bunch of nuts, you know, the, the holes of nuts, acorns, stuff like that. So I'm pretty sure that was probably a squirrel. And so obviously I have to get all that cleaned out of there. But, um, you know, if there would have been a bunch of stuff packed around that exhaust pipe right here, that could have been absolutely catastroph catastrophic if uh if it would have caught something on fire like that so uh don't be a bonehead like me and just plug it in and go to town uh maybe peel the side you know if you've got something like this going on you know, peel the side off take a peek make sure uh because you know it was set night it was out there all summer so i just wanted to show you that i said i had a little baggie of goodies here i had to get out this is said baggie of goodies i have to get out right here and uh i'm gonna get my vacuum real quick i'm gonna get rid of all that stuff another good reason i own a filter queen and then uh i can show you this real quick before we part for a moment you see the exhaust coming out all i'm gonna do is grab it and kind of see free and clear it's all loose so no need to pull it all out i just need to get it loose so okay i'll see you in a moment for the next step after i get this vacuumed out all right as you can see mucho mucho better in there and uh my my electrical system my power supply system actually just sits in there so it's not like it's it's hard mounted or anything like that it just sits in the bottom and so uh, i'm going to take advantage of that real quick and we're going to come around trying to make sure i get it on camera for you there we go one of the reasons i bought this particular heater is because it had these thumb thumb screws here and i love that versus just putting you know bolts and nuts sticking through there i mean there's nothing wrong with the bolts and nuts thing but i wanted to be able to disconnect them easily and you can't get any easier than that right so just pop those two off let the wire fall put the thumb screw back on if we can get it threaded straight sorry i'm off camera and uh this cord here just comes through sorry doing a lot of that off camera but here's the power system the power supply that's all disconnected the exhaust as i showed you that's already free and clear so all I have to do now is right here, there's four bolts. And uh, I'm not going to do that on camera. You guys know how to take a bolt loose, right? So there's four, uh, one on each corner. I'm going to pull these uh, screws out. And then, uh, and then we can get the heater free from the computer tower so we can really get to business. So see you in a momento. Okay, and I'll be if it's not focused on my Viber decal. Anyway, um... Next step is we need to get the uh, housing off of it, which is really, really super simple. Uh, all I have to do is remove the, the fuel cap, which I'm going to be a little easy because there is a lot of kind of dust and nonsense all over. I don't want to get it in the fuel and contaminate the fuel. There's two clips on the back side here. You've seen these. I've showed these before. Same two clips that are right here. Just like that, and then that just pulls up and off. And so, simple enough, right? I am not going to do um, the fuel part as far as disconnecting the fuel on camera. And the reason why is because I don't want the house smelling like diesel fuel for the next month. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take it outside and get the fuel disconnected off of it get the fuel tank 
out of it and all that and I'll bring it back in and, and we can pick up from there so but it's not rocket science you know uh, the best thing to do not have a full tank of fuel right that's number one put your cap on and uh, I'll show you how I'm going to do it but I'm going to do actually do it out there so you put your cap on good and tight make sure it don't have too much fuel in it because the idea is you're going to want to tip this up i got to stop holding it down. You're going to want to tip this up like that to stop more fuel from coming through there. And then that way when you take it loose here or take it loose there, either way, you know, the only fuel you're going to lose is what's in the tube. And that's it, even if you lose it. Um, oh, that one, does that one go there? No, it does not. Nope. Okay. That one comes around. Uh, you can't see it here on the bottom of the pump though. That's where this tube goes to. That's, I don't know why I was thinking backwards at first. But yeah, so I'll disconnect it down here. And, uh, and then what I'll do is I'll, I'll also take this hose up top here. And I'll disconnect it. I showed you earlier when I, did, uh, when I loosened up the exhaust. I showed you where the fuel line went in down there. So that's all I, I have to do is I have to remove the fuel line. And, uh, and once I do that, I'll bring it back in. I just don't want to get diesel all over the place. Okay, we are ready for the next step, which is basically taking this divider out. So I've got the fuel tank and the fuel lines removed. They are currently outside. And I need to take this divider out so we can access the heater easier. And the only thing stopping this divider from coming out at any time is the, uh, the fuel line. So once we remove the fuel line, you can actually get this right out. This stuff here, it just poked down through the hole. It consists of your fuse and the connector is up top but here's your connector the main connector that connects the heater below and uh, and of course this is your fuel pump and so what i'm going to do is i'm going to disconnect this connector just to go ahead and get it up out of the way i'm going to press down there's a clip there i'm going to press down and pull it apart i'm going to set that out of the way and then uh i mean if you wanted to you could pull everything there's really no need to like we could pull the the fuel pump up there's really no need to do all that so we're going to go ahead and again this is the only one we had to worry about because that's nice and open there and there's an opening on this one here so we're just going to lift up because it just sets in place i'm going to work those through that opening there just kind of wiggle it out so that we've got a little clearer shot now to the heater and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay the heater on its side, just like so. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to reposition the camera so that you can see what I am doing a little better. Okay, we are repositioned. And uh, as you can see, I've got that cardboard-like tube that I told you about earlier. And I have to remove that. And then there's four screws that we have to remove. And then the heater will actually right on out so first off let's grab our screwdriver slide it down in there loosen that clamp up get it a little bit looser here so I want to come on around that a little bit and we're gonna just jimmy that off just like that I'm going to go ahead and pull that back just so it's well out of the way. And then, <coughs> if you look in there, you will see screws. And so what I'm going to do is my very best job of not blocking the camera completely. When I do this, <coughs> let me get it to focus. There we go. A little further back. And uh, at least that one wasn't super tight. That's a good thing, huh? I think I'm going to, just for the sake of it, I am going to pull them out diagonally. I know, my fat hands are in the way. You know, it's kind of fun using the camera to line that up. There we go. Probably been way easier for me to line that up if I would have uh, 
if I would have just closed my eyes and felt it. I should have probably had my uh, impact for this, but <coughs> I'll do it by hand, thank you. The reason I don't want to use an impact is because I don't want to mess up the thread. Hang on. That backwards in a, in a <laughs> camera doesn't work. I've got my uh, my thing over there, and I keep moving that. I got my uh, ah. Never mind. Hang on. I know it's so exciting taking screws out. Okay, this one should be about out. There we go. Go ahead and get that remaining top one. See, I'm, uh, again, it's backwards in the camera. One thing that I have a heck of a time dealing with, and again, I know maybe that hand is in the way and that's all it's focusing on, but hang in there, bear with me. And we have four should have four. Where's the other one at? Wait a minute. Okay, they definitely all out. I'm going to go ahead and lift this back up. There's the one that pops out. Okay. Go ahead and lift that back up. And, uh, see. Good to go. Just making sure I'm not yanking on something. Ah. Come on. There we go. There's a piece of plastic that it's kind of catching on for one. And then this is in the way here. Here we go. There we go. No matter how neat and easy to try to make it go, it can be a bear, so. You just gotta kind of wiggle it around, pull on the sides and all that good stuff. So we got the heater out. That is the bottom of it there. And um, first thing we need to do is take this end cap off, okay? And I'll clean stuff up in a moment here. I'll take a break. Let me just get this housing off of here. There we go. Got that off of there. Pull it back so you can see it a little bit better. And then what I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to grab my vacuum. And I'm going to vacuum what I can. And uh, before we get started here, and I'll put the camera up back high. And uh, that way you can get a good top-down view of what I'm doing. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and got a towel and laid it down to work on. And uh, we got the top of the housing off a moment ago. And uh, we got the end cap off. That came off first. And then we could get the top of the housing off. And uh, I'm just going to set those off to the side for now. I did do a quick vacuum on the uh, on the system and so what I'm going to do next is get the heater completely out of this housing and generally sometimes they're a little stuck a little stubborn and you got to play with them fiddle with them a little bit but this this actually just sits down in this housing and the best way I've always found you hold it up like this and you just pull and get it loose because you've got a tab here and then on the other side, right there, that fits down, there's a little spot that it fits right down into in there. And uh, this whole thing will come out. And then before we put it back together, 
we will of course clean all that real good and uh, make it good to go so next up we have our heater here and what I'm going to do I'm going to go ahead and pull this cover off actually yep Trying to do it backwards and I actually need a little bigger screwdriver. I've got my screwdriver set right there on the floor, but I've got my Leatherman on my side with a nice big old fat screwdriver on it. Got to make quick work of that. All right, got that out, and uh, there's a little keeper here. So this is all out, and what I'm going to do now I'm going to set this down like this. I always tell you folks that I do this. I want to lead by example. I want you to pay close attention to what I'm doing here. <clears throat> I took, I got this housing off. Now what I need to do is I need to make sure that when I put everything together, that everything is together right. So all I'm going to simply do is I'm going to take my cell phone, and I know how these go, but lead by example, yo. So, what I'm going to do is I've got my cell phone here. And all I'm going to do is take a, a quick picture. Oops. Actually, I think I got the flash on. I do. Let me turn that off. It is unneeded. And basically, I'm just making sure I get a picture of what wires go where. And again, I have it memorized. But, I'm not going to sit there and tell you to do it and not do it when it only takes a couple of seconds. So, and anybody, anybody can screw up. So I'm going to go ahead and get this board disconnected and just kind of get it out of the way because there's really no need for it to be bothering us. We're going to be taking everything out. It's not a bad idea either at all. To, uh, hang on, there we go. Not a bad idea. I was going the wrong way with clip. Not a bad idea. Just to get everything disconnected, reconnected for one. I'm going to clean all the dust and stuff out of there. But also, you're refreshing those connections when you do that. So it's not a bad idea to do that. And then now we're down here. You've got your temperature sensor here. This is going to be your glow plug here. And then this is going to be a, a sensor. Or the motor. Not <laughs> sensor. The motor. The sensor. Sorry. There's a sensor. Here it is. Right here. And it runs right up close to the fan here. And the fan has magnets back here. Let me turn that that way. The fan has magnets on it. And so those magnets run past this sensor and that lets the the uh, system know how many RPMs this fan is running and that's how it, it knows how much you know how much voltage to supply to the motor to make the fan spin at whatever speed it needs so it uses uh, those magnets and that sensor and, and the control of voltage and it, it uses that in order to control the speed of the motor it's kind of an antiquated way to do things at this particular point in time um, because it should they should definitely you know have a different type of motor in here at this time instead of these um, these brushed DC motors they, they really do need to have brushless motors in it and that would make it a lot better in, in a million and one ways a lot better but unfortunately uh, 
a whole lot of folks out there want to copy, but they don't want to put any effort into improving. And so that's why we haven't seen that kind of stuff hit the market. So, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and pull our temp sensor out. And we're going to have to pull the glow plug out. And uh, so for your temp sensor, you've got a wire clip there. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screwdriver. And that wire is right there. I'm going to take a screwdriver so I can manipulate that clip and get it out. And, uh, well, hang on. Caught up on you. I need my flathead. Hey, I've got one right here. That big one I was talking about. Okay, you see how I got that popped out right there? Now I'm going to raise it out and you can pull it completely out. And I'm just going to pull it out and touch this side. And then this is your temperature sensor. Okay? Now, if your unit ever just starts blowing cold air without you turning it on or doing anything and it, you know you plug it in and it just automatically starts blowing cold air that's most likely going to be this temperature sensor okay so make sure you have spares of those because that is a, actually a pretty common problem okay blow plug i said something this is just a, a rubber stopper here i'm going to pull it up out of the way and I said something about a specialty tool. And uh, that is going to be used to pull that glow plug out. Because as you can see, the glow plug has wires. Which can definitely make it a chore to unbolt it. Pull that. Give us plenty of room to work there. You see the glow plug down there? It's here is a glow plug wrench and so it's made so that the wires will go through it and you can get it down on the, the head of the glow plug so we're just gonna stupid long sleeves it's gonna work until we get it go down ah! I have not used this particular wrench before so Aha, there it went. Okay, I felt it go down. You just gotta wiggle it, work with it, till it goes down on there good. Take the little handle here. And you wanna be careful not to crank around too much sideways or anything like that because that glow plug has got ceramic and it's not that hard to break them. So you just wanna make sure you try to as evenly as you can when you bust that loose. I'm trying. Okay, well, interrupting the removal of the glow plug with, uh, yikes. So, I had a big massive battle and I'm not going to, uh, I'm, I'm not going to show you all of that. Essentially, what wound up happening in the, anyway, is I, I broke my glow plug. That is not cool at all. But, I do have an extra one. I do have a spare. However, in order for me to use my spare glow plug, I'm going, ha going to have to change the uh, connectors. I'm going to have to cut that off. I'm going to have to add those connectors. I've got to solder it, make sure it's a good, nice, strong connection because that's important. This does draw a lot of current through it. It is a glow plug. It can draw, you know, roughly 10 to 12 amps through it. So you want to make sure that you have a good, good, solid connection. So I don't have any other... If, if I had a, some more of these ends here, I would just, you know, term, I'd just cut these and terminate them. But I don't. And I think, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get, get those off of those wires and be able to put them on there. So instead of trying to do all that nonsense, I'd rather just cut them back about here and then just strip the wire, the, strip the insulation back and uh, do a real good, nice job of... Uh, putting the wires together with solder and the whole nine yards uh, because again it's it's gonna carry a lot of current through it 
So you want to make sure that you've got a nice, good, strong connection. And then, uh, you know, I'll put, of course, I'll put heat shrink and stuff on it too. So we'll get to that. Um, I will get to that when we get to that. The next part is we need to finish getting this housing apart now that the glow plug is out. That's a result of a crappy tool. So that I got from Amazon. I had not used that tool before. And uh, yeah, that is, that is the result of that. Well, what happened is I had, to, I had to be able to get the wires either through this or through, you know, any other, the other sockets or anything I had. And that's the problem is you got a wire you have to deal with, right? And so what I managed to do is I actually managed <laughs> to get those terminals pulled through those tiny, tiny little holes there. I actually managed to get those terminals pulled through there without breaking nothing. Everything was all good. And then um, I took and I used the close end of this and, you know, put it down over it, got it all down, nice tight. And there was just, the t by the time I put the least bit of pressure on it to unscrew it, it popped it off. And there's really kind of nothing you can do about it. Like I said, you have a spare. We'll put the spare in. Of course, we'll have to use it with this. Actually, no, we won't have to use it with the open end. Um, because I'll cut those and then I'll put that in. And then I'll uh, re-terminate those wires. That is how we will skin that cat. So those have a different type of end on them, I'm pretty sure. Um, pretty sure that's a different end. We could luck out and it may have the same terminals, but I doubt it. So anyway, fun times. We are going to need a hex key for that. And so let me grab my hex keys and I shall rejoin you. Okay, we've got our four millimeter Allen wrench right here and I'm just gonna pull that housing screw and I'm gonna do this in a diagonal pattern, right? Because I wanna loosen them and tighten them evenly. So, and these weren't super tight. So, sometimes they are, sometimes they're not real tight. Sometimes, plenty of people have gotten them a little loose. So, it's not a horribly bad idea to maybe check those right when you get one brand new. Just to make sure. Because if you get an air leak in there, it's going to cause you a problem. And we're going to try to get this apart without uh, damaging the gasket. That one should come. Alright. On our last screw. And it's already popping loose. That's a good deal there. Okay. There you go. That is going to be your inside turbine if we don't destroy the gasket. There's your gasket. And like I said, you can reuse that. Don't break it. You can reuse it. And uh going to be your inside fan, your outside fan. Okay. We're not going to mess with anything with that. We're just going to set it off to the side. We're just going to leave it be. We don't want to, I'm not going to mess around with any, anything with that to where I've got to uh, readjust tolerance or, you know, that I may get something out of balance because technically they're supposed to balance those things. Okay, lucky here at that goodness in there. Ick, huh? Okay, so what you have there, this is your burner. We're going to be pulling that out. And this is your fuel line that goes into it. And uh, it's a little icky there. But uh, let me go ahead and, and pull that burner out of there. And we'll go from there. I think that's going to be... No, it is the same one. Okay. But I can't reach it that way. 
Now, these aren't too tight either. I mean, you don't want to crank them down, crank them down, because you do have to get them loose. Oh. The last one is going to be the bear. We're going to we're going to use the screwdriver in a way that we really ain't supposed to be using it, but you know what? It worked. Oh, as well. There really isn't that much to these. Be careful with that glow plug. And, you know, I mean, it just happens. That's why you make sure you have a spare. Because we'd have been hosed if I didn't have that spare. Now i got to figure out a way to go with another spare. This one here. We're almost to all the goodness. And then I've just got some cheap Super Tech Walmart carburetor cleaner. And then the screen we're going to have to get out too. Okay, so our burner is loose, and it just popped right free. There's a little rubber piece so that comes with it. And they, uh, when you buy a kit, a rebuild kit, they come with a new one. We're not going to replace that one because it's not bad. But uh, this is technically your burner, and it looks pretty clean. That's the burn chamber, and uh, I'm trying to make sure you can see it good in the light. Let me grab my uh, headlamp here and turn it on and shine it down in there so that you can see better down in there. <laughs> Believe it or not, I'm shocked that it's not way, way worse than that because this thing burns on low the majority of the time. And the fact that that is so clean, holy cow, I, I didn't expect that to be nearly that clean. Especially because of the trouble that it gives me on startup, but you know good. That's good Get that down. So this is what we're gonna have to focus on. I will clean that out But this is what we're gonna have to focus on real real quick and right here This is gonna be my ignition issue right here. Now let me show you this Right there is a hole Okay, that hole it's pretty blocked off. That hole is where this unit needs to draw air to start. Okay, to start it needs to draw air through that hole. So, there's a screen down in there. We're going to try to get that screen out. Hopefully and maybe possibly get it out without damaging it. And possibly even uh, uh, reuse it. Possibly. I've got an another one. So it's no big deal if uh, something happens and I mess the screen up. There's a chance of it. You can't, I can't guarantee you'll get that screen out without damaging it. So let me, uh, I'm not going to do that on camera because I, I don't want to take a chance of getting a uh, carburetor cleaner on the camera on the lens or anything. That would be a total disaster. So let me uh, go take this outside real quick and I'll spray it down. I'm going to try to get as much of that kind of loose as I can. And then I'll show you getting that screen out and uh, making sure that hole's opened up. Because again, I told you I was having issues with it starting. That was the issue that I had with it. Okay, so let me run this down real quick. If you're having problems with it start, there is a number starting. There is a number of things that it can be. Number one, you have to make sure that you're getting enough uh, current. Now, I said current to your heater. Oftentimes, uh, people will use an insufficient source of power or they will use insufficient wires going to their heater. And again, when that starts up, it's going to draw roughly between 10 to 12 amps. That's quite a bit of current. 
So you need to make sure that your supply is capable of that. If your supply or the wire providing the power is too small and it can't run that kind of a current, you aren't going to start up very well. If you do manage, if, if it doesn't kick off and you do manage to get it to start, it's not going to be a good strong start, you know. You want a good strong start. So that means you want your, your power supply to the glow to the heater and therefore to the glow plug to be uh, good and strong. That's number one. You have to make sure that power supply is good. From there, it could be your glow plug if it's not wanting to start. Um, usually, if, usually glow plugs go bad, bad. But you know, you will get one. You will get the case where one it just kind of get funky on you. Usually, they'll go bad, bad, and they just don't work. Um, so, it could though. There's a possibility. It could be the glow plug. Or, it could be that screen is all gunked up in there, or it could be that hole. And in our case, it's the hole and probably the screen too. So, let me go do that, and I'll let the camera charge up a little bit, and I'll see you in a moment. Alrighty, we have the, uh, the housing here all cleaned up. It was pretty uneventful. There wasn't that much in it like I showed you earlier. It's pretty clean, way cleaner than I even possibly expected it to be. And even the inside of the burner was remarkable clean, remarkably clean, I should say. Uh, you know, I mean, I did, I did spray stuff in there, but it just didn't have hardly anything in there. The spot where we had the big issue is what I was showing you earlier, and that hole there. And I will take a screenshot from before. There we go. I'll take a screenshot from before and a screenshot from now so you can see the difference in how that hole looked. And uh, so I got that taken care of. And you can see, I'll try to hold that up. You can see it's, it's, a, it's a hole, you know. I'm trying to get it, there you go. It's, it's a fairly good sized hole to draw air in there. So uh, that was, like I said, pretty well completely gone. So there's a screen down in there and I'm going to try to show you. I'm fighting the backwards camera thing again. So there's a screen down in there and I think that thing came remarkably clean with the carburetor cleaner. So I'm not going to do nothing. I'm not going to try to fight that screen out. I am not going to try to do anything with it. I'm going to reuse that screen. I don't think it's going to be an issue. So What we need is our gasket here. And, uh, oops. Duh. <laughs> or that gasket's already there, sorry. That's the gasket for up here. I should have caught that lock quicker than I did, but nonetheless, the gasket's still there. So we're just going to set this down in the right way, <laughs> preferably. we got to bring this piece around here. And just set it down it goes in there and I did get a new one in my rebuild kit but I'm not going to replace it because there's nothing wrong with that one so you know keep your parts you don't necessarily if you don't have to use everything just wait until you do need to replace it would be my advice so okay and I have screws here I put them all in in that container there the broken glow plug and the old boot there, we'll set that off to the side. And we're going to be looking. These are the ones that hold it to the, the outside housing. These are going to be the longer ones we put in later. And these are going to be the short ones. This here is a piece from that glow plug. These will be the short ones that we need right now. So, let me just... I was going to try to get it started that way, but, uh, nah. Couldn't quite get my fingers down in there enough, and I'm having a heck of a time staying straight enough on it to even get it started here. There we go. So, bad thing about cheap products from China is the fit and finish are often 
not the best especially when it comes to threads gotta be careful because it's easy to cross thread a cheaply manufactured product and all of these are cheaply manufactured unless you buy the uh, brand names now I put two in and I went ahead and snugged that one out and came back to that one and snugged it I'm gonna use the same procedure for the following two I'm gonna try to again to get it started with my fingers yep because that will prevent cross threading if I can get it started with my fingers and I already have it started Okay, and tighten that one down. And come and do this one. Okay, and I don't know if I can get above this piece with this Allen wrench or not. I believe I might be able to. Yep, good deal. So I'm going to give it just another snug because I really didn't like how loose they were. And again, I'm doing it in a cross pattern so I make sure that I'm tightening everything evenly and I'm trying to make sure that I get about the same amount of torque on all of them. So, it's important stuff. Important stuff. Okay, so that is in. Looks pretty good. So, we can go ahead and... Uh, should I go ahead and do the glow plug? I think... I think I'm going to go ahead and get the housing on. And then I'll do the glow plug. So, uh, get these screws out of the way. And that screw off to the side. We will need these four screws we will need our other side we will need our gasket right like that and that's going to flip around right like that not much to it said so these are pretty antiquated devices at this point there is room for tons and tons of improvement on the design all aspects of the design burn chamber motor ignition system because newer technology is way more efficient and efficiency is the name of the game trying to get these as far by finger as I could but yeah. now we're going to be in the way of that <laughs> always run into something one direction or the other that's for sure and you notice I'm doing that cross tightening again and I'm not tightening them tightening them I'm just snugging them up good Here's the last one to snug, and then we'll give them a little bit of a tighten. Okay, and just, you know, like I say, cross pattern. Try to get them as even as what you can. 
And uh, now we are ready for the glow plug. Turn that in the direction that you can see it. And uh, new glow plug has a uh, little protective cover on it. Pull that off. And what I'm going to go ahead and do now, is I'm going to go ahead and cut those wires off. Use my wire clippers on here should do it because they're big, thick, sturdy cables. So <laughs> should be plenty. I'm just going to chop this off. I almost did it in one chop. There we go. That wasn't too bad. I'm going to pull the boot off. Go ahead and get it started down in there. Okay. Find my cheap junk wrench and stick it on there. And what I was just going to do is take my uh, pliers. I don't think these would be enough to do it. No, I want to do it the right way. Give me one moment. Okay, I want to use a pair of these puppies, commonly known as vice grips. And I already adjusted the size. I'm just going to clamp it down. And you don't have to go crazy, crazy. But be careful to keep this tool straight because if you don't keep this tool straight, you'll snap that just like I snapped the other one. And that's why I'm not using uh, the stupid thing that came with it. Because you can't get it all the way through there. And if you just stick it through one hole and you turn, man, it's really hard to keep it straight enough, uh, straight enough that you don't break the glow plug. Ask me how I know. Exhibit A. So... I'm using this method. So again, I'm just going to kind of wiggle so I can kind of feel where I'm centered there. Just a little tug. I, that's it. I don't, I don't want to tempt fate, if you will. So wiggle our little plug off of there. And then uh, I do want to kind of take a peek at both of these boots, wherever the other one went. Hmm... Okay, we'll go with the one that came with this unit. So, we just have to poke those wires back up through those holes. And I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera. I'll get the boot up on there and I'll get all set up to solder our wires. And that way uh, it'll save some time on camera. So, let me do that. Let me get all set up, get prepared, and then I'll show you that. All right, I have one all but finished. This one is ready to get soldered. So uh, I'm trying this method that I love a lot. Sometimes it doesn't always work as planned. So it is what it is. I'm going to do it over top of the heater. That in case if any solder falls, it's just going to fall on the heater. Not going to hurt nothing. I'd rather it be on the heater than on my towel or on the table. So, and if, uh, you know, this might not work, I had to play with this one a little bit. And uh, if I do, I do, I'll show you that. But uh, I just wrapped the solder around it. I tied the wires together and I wrapped the solder around it. And the idea, the idea is, is you don't have to mess around too much. See the solder's coming off. And the reason why that's happening is because that wire is so thick that it's not getting a chance to heat that wire enough so I'm gonna heat the wire up good and then uh, you know do it the old school way here I got really shaky hands so okay that's definitely a good enough solder joint there I will live with that I don't know for sure if I'll get the heat shrink around it or not I'm gonna try I gotta let it cool off for sure uh, but I'm going to put electrical tape even over top of that anyway, uh, just to have an added layer. I don't want it to uh, vibration rubbing up against it. And, uh, you know, I don't want to bare wires and short stuff out. That would not be fun. So everything is pretty well good. 
I just like I said I have to wait in this cool until this cools off enough that I can slide this up on it if I can get it over it that one was a bear to get as far as what I got on that one like I say it have electrical tape either way and so um, that's pretty much where we're at then uh, I can put this back on and uh, it doesn't matter on the polarity on these so and then we'll get the uh, main board back on there well we got to get our temp sensor in. I can do that right now while that's uh, while that's cooling off so we've got our temperature sensor here so we're just gonna take it and set it down into place like it was before and then we are going to grab our keeper which goes in this way I can find the hole no comment from the peanut gallery oh that's because I'm going I'm showing the wrong way that's why sheesh that watchman guy anyway let me get this down like right up okay let me make sure that's in place looks like it's in place I'm just gonna take it and I'm gonna wrestle it down and get it in the hole oh well I gotta be uh you gotta be in the between the right fins I wasn't quite in between the right fins now I am and I just pushed it down now I'll try to kind of finagle it a little bit more to see if I can get it to pop up in there better hang on I'm really not happy with that there we go much happier with that right there got our wires running right through there that's fine so our temp sensor our glow plug and then we got our motor wires all right let's see if that's i believe so slide that up on there just like that Ooh, looks like i'm gonna be right about where the other one was I could get it over but not super far and there we go actually I got that one on just fine all right so we need to heat the heat shrink up a little bit because that's how it works ergo heat shrink fun fun and we got a green one to throw a little flame wrench on this is baby flame wrench this is like infant flame wrench there hell this might be embryo flame wrench always name your tools by their size by you know the approximate human age you know you've got toddler tools you've got kindergartner tools you, you know then you got Mo, right? When you bring Mo out, that's when that's when shit got real. So, Dad always had Mo's laying around. That's for sure. That's no joke. Dad, Dad called him Mo. He had Mo and Joe, and most of the time, it was referring to a pipe wrench <laughs> when he used those terms, but not always. My dad was a trip. But, you know, he taught me the perfect balance between doing it right and doing it like a redneck hillbilly. And my dad was a master at walking that tightrope. And I'll tell you what, that's the best kind of skills to have. The, the ability to do it right and the ability to do it the redneck way if the right way isn't possible. And in fact, I'm going to show you that, something with that, here in just a moment. Another fine example of how the redneck way works just as well. Okay, now we got to put our little clipper thing on. So, you got a little keeper on one side. It'd be the bottom side, it's right there. 
and you got to make sure that you get it on the right side and it doesn't matter on these as far as uh polarity it doesn't have a plus and a minus on a glow plug so okay got that one in and that one's going to need to be popped up a little that might be enough yeah oh nope not quite grab my little screwdriver here Doesn't help when my hands are shaking like crazy. I need nicotine. A little more caffeine would be nice. Mm. Ah, well, that's good enough. I just needed to hold it in place more than anything. All right, so pull those out of our way, and we've got a main board to grab. We did have a main board to grab. Don't tell me the squirrel stole it. No, nah, it's, it's, uh, I've got it set in somewhere. I just don't see. Let me grab my flashlight. Or, let me grab my main board. I shall return. Okay, so you can laugh at me all you want, but the main board was setting right there. Captain Obvious didn't see it. So, let me grab the main board. And, uh, Remember, earlier, just for reference, and I'm going to show you. Ah. Had to find it. I don't use this a whole lot. My phone's all catching up. Remember earlier, we took a picture so that we knew where everything went. So that's one thing. Let me, uh, whoops. Let me knock my flashlight on the floor. So that seems to work well. And what I grabbed was a post-it note. You may ask, why do I have a post-it note? Well, you're supposed to have a specific clearance in between that magnet and this sensor. So, first of all, we are going to plug our wires in. And so our... Uh, thermostat wire plugs in like so and there's going to be you see how there's three holes for that wire the two wires are close together so obviously you're going to want to use the two wires uh, that are close together on those two contacts like that okay I mean that should be a given but just in case it it wasn't <laughs> and so this is a pretty simple deal when it goes on one way Plug it in, lock it down, it's good to go. You got your power wire for your motor, same thing. It's got a direction that it goes. Make sure it's in the right direction. Put it down, snap it into place, okay? Now, we've got our wiring hooked up. Gotta turn the right way, spun the right way. And there's that sensor, okay? What I'm going to do is, I'm trying to get these wires the best. I kind of like them being down like that. So I'm trying to get them, but I'm going to go ahead and get this started on. Make sure I'm on. Yeah, I'm going to get the front here down. There's some clips, okay? Some clips that kind of hold it. I'm going to put that down like that. This is the screw that went in, but I'm not going to tighten it down. I'm just going to get it in and I'm going to start it. And this one may not let me get that close. So I'll, I'll try. Got my screwdriver here. I'm not quite getting started. There we go. And I don't want to tighten it. I'm just going to I'm just going to get it kind of close to snug, not even what I would call snug. And I don't think I can really go up any. Yeah, I don't. This one, I think I can just go all the way forward with it, and uh, and it's good. It, it actually won't go any closer, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and tighten that down. 
and if there's any issues with it starting that would be the first place that we would look so just for reference so there it is that is the heater cleaned out reassembled let me go ahead and I'm not gonna show that all on camera because I don't think it's really shouldn't be that necessary I, I wouldn't think so but the bottom housing as I said earlier this just sets in there okay you have this spot here and this spot here they go down into these grooves and then you have this wiring harness here that has this rubber grommet that goes into there it's pretty simple slide it down in there and work with it a little bit to get it back far enough set it down in the spot where it goes let me get it turned around here grab the wiring harness grommet slide it down in there like so did i get it backwards i don't think so and then uh you have the top ah it's this side it's always the side you're not looking at I promise it goes down on that you just gotta wiggle around and mess with it once you get it set down on there like that you can take your end cap and snap it back in place okay and that'll hold it together so now the rest uh, of it I won't show you because it's just putting it back in its housing but I will get it all back in its housing I will get it all put back together and I will bring you back for the um, for the testing of the unit I promise I will not start it until I bring you back all right now for the moment of truth we will uh, plug it in And may have to try to start it a couple of times because it hasn't been ran yet and I didn't prime lines or anything. So we're just going to try it. I'm going to hit the power button. Certainly, certainly sounds like it uh, pulled down, drawed awful hard. So it sounds like our glow plug is working fine. We just got to wait for it to um, get to the uh, state to where it starts the pump going. And like I said, it might take a little bit. Probably not real long. When I started this up for the very first time, I did prime it. But um, I think it would have taken off if I didn't. Should be getting ready to start pumping any moment. And I do have my lapel mic on. I probably shouldn't have done that. That way you could hear what it sounds like when it catches. But that's okay. You will actually hear the flame catch. Still waiting to hear the pump kick. Should be any time now. There's the pump. And it should pretty well gravity feed to the pump. But it's got to pump it out of the top of the pump down into the heat chamber. And I think I hear it. I thought I heard it, but I guess not. It's a dose pump, and it gives just a tiny, tiny dose of fuel each time. There it goes. I don't know if you could hear that. But it most certainly took right off. There you go. 
That is uh, what I would consider annual maintenance on one of these heaters, to be quite honest. I would consider that annual maintenance. Um, you know, it's something that you want to definitely do after the each season of use because it is going to get it is going to get uh, kind of gummed up especially right around that hole where I showed you that's going to be the worst offender and uh, you keep that hole cleaned out and you keep that all airtight in there and it should serve you pretty well and the one thing I did not comment on when I had it apart and I was putting it back together is that grommet that goes over the glow plug make sure that that grommet is all in place and secure good and it's got a nice good snug fit because again you have to maintain a little bit of air pressure inside of that chamber so that the air can go through that tiny little hole so that it can properly start as it did there so it wouldn't start like that before towards the end of last winter uh, it would take on average two tries and uh, you just run it and it would um, it would go to start up and since it failed what it would do is it would stop running the fuel pump and it would turn the glow plug block on, back on so they can burn anything off the glow plug that's on there but it turns the pump off so not to you know exacerbate the problem it's going to get loud let me step back a little bit uh, so not to exacerbate the problem the pump shuts down well what it would typically do is right before it completed its shutdown you would hear catch so if you real quick unplug the the power supply and plugged it back in to trick it like it you just plugged it in that way you could start the restart cycle immediately while that flame was catching and and it would go ahead and it would take off well last night when i started up for the first time this year it took me like four times to get it to catch and go I knew it needed cleaned out. I just wanted to get it good heated up. That way it would have broke stuff loose. And uh, hell, it was cleaner than I could ever imagine it being. So, uh, but that was the problem. It just got gummed up around that hole. And uh, to be real honest, I could have probably just stuck something down there, cleaned that hole out, and it would have probably ran again this season fine. But I don't recommend doing that. Do your proper maintenance, tear them down, make sure you get you know that hole cleared out make sure that screen is nice and clean and clear uh the one that goes down below the glow plug i didn't replace mine because i didn't have to so just make sure you follow all the p's and q's and you know there's a guy uh, i think his name's uh david mcclucky or something to that effect that uh, has a ton of videos on these heaters that go much much further in detail he really rips them down and uh, goes into detail on the specs and everything else it settled back down it got spun up it, uh, it's up to temperature and now it's uh it's on its run cycle so you just don't get any better than that all right folks i hope i could have helped somebody out there maintenance their diesel heater shalom